You see, it was in Vrindavan one morning, Srila Prabhupada asked me to see if there is uh, uh, spinach, the two varieties of spinach, the green variety and the red variety. Uh, he asked me to see if we have these two varieties of spinach, if there was uh, pumpkin, radish, eggplant, and bitter melon. So I went to the kitchen and you know, there was, in Prabhupada's kitchen there was no um, spinach. <coughs> <coughs> so I went to the deity kitchen and devotee kitchen, you know, and I was told that that was the month of spinach fast. So I went and told Prabhupada that Prabhupada, this is Chaturmas and this is the month of spinach fast. So Prabhupada asked me, is everyone observing Chaturmas? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got the message. So I myself went to the market uh, to buy everything. <laughs> and I went to the market and I got, I thought I got everything. Uh, then I came back and I told Prabhupada, Prabhupada I got everything. So Prabhupada asked me what you got. So I said, Prabhupada I got these two varieties of spinach, I got eggplant, I got pumpkin, I got radish. And then I remembered that I forgot to get bitter melon. But uh, you know, it was so stupid of me, you know, like I, I told Prabhupada, I lied to Prabhupada, and I said the bitter melon. So I thought, you know, just arrange to get the bitter melon, you know, like, and so <coughs> Prabhupada said, bring them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I ran out, so Prabhupada asked me to bring it, so I ran out and there was an employee in the kitchen, in the guest house, his name was Kishan. So I told, I gave some money to Kishan and I said, Kishan, take the cycle, go to the market and get some bitter melon. And so I was, you know, I thought it will take 10, 15 minutes, you know. And in the meantime, I went to the kitchen, I started to prepare other preps. Uh, and, and I was kind of, you know, running back to the gate and kitchen and back, you know. And then uh, finally Kishan came back and he said that there is no bitter melon in the market. <laughs> and so I already went to the kitchen, the devotee kitchen, there was no bitter melon. And at that time, you know, I felt as if, you know, I mean, the whole world is crumbled down on me, you know. <laughs> and I was uh, literally praying to Krishna, you know, like, please save me from, now I have to go and tell Prabhupada that I lied to him, you know, that I forgot to bring bitter melon. And you know, like I was kind of dazed and walking back. I was kind of preparing myself. Now I have to go and tell Prabhupada. I didn't tell him at that time because I thought that Prabhupada would get annoyed with me and start chastising. And now, who <laughs> knows, you know, <laughs> what kind of chastisement I'll get, you know. And <clears throat> so, usually what I used to do is take the passage uh, next to the temple, uh, the Parikrama Marg, and walk up to the uh, up to Prabhupada's kitchen. But I don't know, I was so dazed. I took, I walked up to the Gurukul building and then I started to, you know, go that way through the Gurukul building. And there, you know, I saw on the balcony, on that passage, the Gurukul, there is one green bitter melon. <laughs> I, you know, I just pounced on that and started to thank Krishna in every possible way and ran, uh, picked up the vegetables and went to Prabhupada's room and I, Prabhupada was already taking his massage 
So before taking his bath, he used to take his massage. So I went to his room and I told Prabhupada I brought the vegetables. So Prabhupada asked me, told me how to cut the vegetables. And then finally I said, Prabhupada and the bitter melon. And so Prabhupada uh, looked at me and said, bitter melon. <laughs> and just the way Srila Prabhupada said bitter melon, uh, I had, I was completely convinced beyond any doubt that Prabhupada knew what actually happened. <laughs> Perhaps the main quality of Srila Prabhupada that strikes me is his compassion. Uh, and of course his compassion was manifest in the intense desire to make everyone Krishna conscious. Uh, and his compassion was manifest in everything he did. I remember one incident where uh, Srila Prabhupada was giving a, a public program outdoors in indoor. And uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of people in the street. It was arranged in, in the street. And uh, the kirtan had just finished, and the lecture was just about to begin. And I just had some que silly question in my mind, or some, and I just wanted to ask Srila Prabhupada. So without thinking of anything, I just went right up to Srila Prabhupada, in front of everyone, right in the middle of the program. And uh, I said, Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know the verse, such and such, where does it come from? And Srila Prabhupada looked at me and he said, Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, perhaps. And then I went back and sat down and he continued with the program. So years later, uh, I would reflect on the incident because sometimes devotees would like interrupt me when I was in the middle of some activity or some thought, and I'd get very disturbed. And then I'd think of Srila Prabhupada, you know, right in the middle of a big public program. For no reason at all, I just go up to him and ask this silly little question. And he didn't get upset at all. He very patiently and considerately answered it. So whenever I feel someone is like interrupting me or intruding. I think of Srila Prabhupada and how kind he was. Madhusudana asked Prabhupada after his lecture, if prasadam is stale, is it still all right to eat it if it gets old? And Prabhupada said, simply, if you have got the faith, meaning if you don't, you'll get sick, and if you do, then of course you can take. Then he said, uh, do you ever feel like getting married. And actually I, I didn't, so I said no. I said the only thing is that sometimes I see all the GBCs are married, so I think maybe I should marry. And he said, you will never be GBC. Then he said uh, uh, that the demands of the body, uh, like sex or any other demand, are like itching. And if you try to scratch the itch, the itch will get worse. He said the best thing is to tolerate, and gradually the itching will subside. He said whatever it may be, hunger also, it will subside. So the best thing is to tolerate. So you remain brahmachari for some time, and then I will give you sannyas. So then I, I understood what Prabhupada wanted, and I decided without any doubt that I'll remain brahmachari. <laughs>